still trying to figure out the kinks on this teleporter, okay? I'm working on it. Some of the OGs on this channel, or as I like to call the Platinum Teds, know about a video that I did about almost exactly two years ago, where I talk about my experience in 2016 with my best friend Tucker, where we go to what I have called the creepy religious thrift shop in Mitchell, South Dakota. Well, when I was traveling to Los Angeles in the fall, I decided it would be a good idea to return to this cursed place. Little did I know that my experience there would be arguably almost stranger than the original time. And this time, I brought my dad. Let's talk about that story. what the corn palace is in the legendary town of mitchell south dakota it's essentially a tourist trap type location an entire multi-purpose building that is covered in corn husk and designed to look like the taj mahal of corn and during the summer months its sole purpose is essentially to attract visitors who are traveling along the highway it's situated along the route of the i-90 freeway so i guess the thought process behind it is that they can catch people who are traveling across south dakota to get to mount rushmore and get some of that sweet tourist money, or as they say in France, cha-ching wee wee. <laughs> Originally, there was a bunch of billboards that would advertise the Corn Palace leading up to Mitchell as if it was the fucking Grand Canyon or something. They would say stuff like, world's only Corn Palace, as if it was a hard thing to create, or that people across the world were actively trying to make one and just were failing or something. It was so niche and so specific, and during the summer months, they have an entire gift shop that is dedicated to just the concept of corn. Just the concept, okay? But the Corn Palace isn't the point of this video at all. In fact, the Corn Palace isn't even the topic of this video. But what is the topic of this video is what lies across from the Corn Palace, and that is... The real name of this building is Valtarati, Shiloh's Tabernacle, Spiritual, Educational, and Recreational Park, which is a mouthful. What made this store so strange was not due to the overwhelming amount of Jesus paraphernalia, of which there was a lot. That was pretty straightforward, and I think it's the kind of thing to be expected of a store in the middle of goddamn South Dakota. That's not an Easter egg about South Dakota. They love fucking Jesus. I mean, they don't, okay. So my first true interaction with the soul of this building came when I lost my best friend inside of it. I was looking around for him until the lone employee told me, oh, he's in the back. It was in this moment that the discovery that we made gave this location the title of Creepy Religious Thrift Shop. This building had what I imagined to be the crown jewel of any religious thrift shop, which was the Bible Walkthrough Museum. Inside of this building, with realistic gravel on the floor and dimly lit fake torches, was a realistic representation of the story of the Bible, represented with mannequins that you would find at a Macy's dressed up to be biblical characters. As someone who had never come from this sort of religious intensity, it was a lot. It was a very, very strange thing to stumble upon in the middle of South Dakota. And if you wanna know what our original reactions were to it when we left, this is it right here. What the fuck? <laughs> Just got out of the corn palace in the religious thrift shop. I don't even, like, I don't even know. That was one of the weirdest experiences of my life. When I was originally writing the script for this video, I was doing some research on the history of the religious thrift shop. I wanted to know how such a strange place could pop up in a place like this. What the religious thrift shop used to be is almost worse than what it is today. You know, guys, I'm just gonna pull the Band-Aid off, all right? Here it is. Enchanted Doll Museum. Enchanted. Doll. Museum. The Enchanted Doll Museum was a very special and unique attraction in Mitchell, South Dakota that housed more than 4,000 antique dolls. Why? They had dolls of things that didn't even really need to be dolls, such as the fucking Pope. If there is anything creepier than that in South Dakota, then please give us a, drop us a line, okay? 1-800, what the fuck? 
<laughs> this is the kind of place that your parents would take you on some sort of family bonding cross country road trip when your mom had a late aunt that smelled like litter and mothballs who just so happened in her childhood to own a bunch of antique dolls. She thought it would be nostalgic or something, but instead it just gives you nightmares for the rest of your childhood. So, thanks a lot, hypothetical mom. You screwed up. Here's some questions that I have for the Enchanted Doll Museum that came before. Why are they enchanted? What does that say to me? That means magic. Curses are also magic. And if my math teacher taught me correctly, instead of drop kicking me at 7.36 in the fucking morning, then I would know that by the transitive property, this is a cursed doll museum. What does this mean for us? Well, there are mannequins in the Bible Walkthrough Museum, and I don't think it takes the mind of the late Stephen Hawking, bless his soul, to deduce that these mannequins are cursed as well. And if I'm being additionally more honest, I was under the impression that these mannequins could potentially have been moving when my back was turned. So what do we have now? We've got some South Dakotan weeping angels, but it's worse because it's the nativity scene and baby Jesus is out for blood. And he's not turning it into wine, he's turning it into sustenance. There was even a court case that was going on where there was a dispute on where the money from the trust fund would go after the doll museum closed. And that is probably the most South Dakotan drama that I could ever hope for, I could ever ask for. It's beautiful. Why do you do this, South Dakota? What the hell is going on with you? All the other 49 states are worried sick and you're out here making fucking doll museums? South Dakota, why? I'll tell you why South Dakota does this. They've got nothing else going on. This is officially a hate letter to the entire state of South Dakota, okay? Because the only things that you guys have going on is corn. Corn! It's literally corn for miles. People are making their shoes out of corn husk and sewing it together with that shit that you get stuck in your teeth when you eat corn on the cob. And frankly, it's gone too far. Hashtag cancel South Dakota. Hashtag merge South Dakota with North Dakota and create a new state called Dakota Tomato Soup. Either way, eventually the Cursed Doll Museum kicked the bucket and the building was bought up by an aristocratic fellow who decided to create the creepy religious thrift shop. I'm not gonna say his name though because I don't want people fucking outright hating on the guy because he's pretty much harmless. Surprisingly, the original intention of the creepy religious thrift shop was not to be a creepy religious thrift shop, but rather a mall slash entertainment type zone for families and kids with religious vibes, I guess. I am just amazed at the point A to point B that you've got here. You've got amazing mall with food and various attractions to, huh? What? Now that you have some context on what the actual religious thrift shop is, and also the history of what it was before, why don't we talk about my experience in 2020 when I brought my dad. So we park in Mitchell, South Dakota, and my dad gets a view of the Corn Palace and the religious thrift shop for the first time. The Corn Palace. I didn't, I, I, I thought it was just legend. <laughs> Obviously my dad had heard stories from me about what the religious thrift shop was and the Corn Palace. And he had also seen the video that I had originally made. So he was going into this situation with a good amount of father's skepticism, as I'd like to call it. I did not think that either of us were prepared for how strange the conversation would be with its lone employee and owner at this religious thrift shop. Let me just say first that the guy who runs the shop is a friendly fellow. He's a nice guy. He is an overwhelming, enthusiastic character, I'm sure, for anyone who enters the shop. And I am sure that the people of Mitchell are lucky to have him. I'm sure they love the guy, and I'm sure he gets parades on the daily for how fantastic his shop is his religious thrift shop. And I am sure that he is a completely harmless human being. What I will say though, is that conversations that result from just surface level chatting with this person are so strange. It's like talking to an alien that's disguised as a human and is trying to fit in, but is doing a very lackluster job. So we enter the shop and we are almost immediately greeted by Mr. Thrift Shop. He is ready to rock and he is ready to roll and he's ready to make some sales. I appreciate that in a businessman. He's got a lot of inventory of Jesus shirts and he is trying to sell in quantities that are very high. So we got into the small talk. He asked us where we were coming from and my dad was like, oh, Massachusetts. He's going out to LA to pursue film. He wants to be a filmmaker. I'm 22, yeah. Make movies. And that's when he just went off on the topic for some reason. Bro, what's wrong? 
with these children of ours. He started talking about how he couldn't believe that their children would go and pursue arts careers and go to college for them and stuff. He then talks about how his daughter had pursued an art degree in like theater or acting or something and that he was actively disappointed in her for doing so. And that furthermore, he was hoping that she would be unsuccessful. She still thinks she's gonna pursue that. I hope not. I hope she'll be very unsuccessful because- To which of course my dad is like, I mean, we, we, well, we should support our kids, right? We should support them in whatever they choose to do. Because I, I, I hope, I hope he is success. That's right, success. That's no, what I hope. successful because Happiness. I just can't imagine having a parent that hopes that their kids fail at something and then goes and talks to just random strangers that you believe that. Another funny thing later that he says when he's talking about his kids is about how his daughter was into doing cosplay and he was he was like weirded out by that. You know what? Cosplay or cosplay or something like oh, that. Oh, cosplay. Creates costumes, creates everything. Yeah, it's but great. It's a... While simultaneously not seeing the irony of creating an entire Bible walkthrough museum and dressing up mannequins to be characters in a story. As I said before, he's a very, very friendly guy. He asked me if he could adopt me and make him, me his son because I was tall. Of course, it would only make sense that this desire increases when he beckons me to take off my mask and he realizes that I'm white. <laughs> Remove the mask, I want to see you, come on. Hi. Hi. Oh, you are right. Uh, can I adopt huh? him too? No, oh, no, 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 you can't. All the hard stuff's over already. The funny thing is that when I was doing research for this video, I was looking at the comments section about the original video that I had done about the Corn Palace and the Creepy Religious Thrift Shop. There are people in the comments section of that original video before I even experienced this conversation I had with Thrift Shop Man where they say that he says that he wanted to adopt them. So what that tells me is that there are hundreds, potentially thousands of people that this man has said he wants to adopt. He is so disappointed in his kids that he is asking any person that comes into his store if he can adopt them. He's willing to take anyone else at this point. Finally, the last very interesting thing that Mr. Thrift Shop told me while I was inside of the creepy religious thrift shop was when I told him that I was moving to California. He asked me if I have any family out there and knowing sort of where this is going, I tell him yes. I tell him, oh, I've got plenty of family out in California. They're basically spilling out of the sink. What he says is that he's got a place that he lives about two hours from LA. And if I ever needed an emergency contact, that I could get his number. And mind you, as far as he knows, this is the first time that he's ever met me. The reason why I knew where he was going with this was because the last time I was at the creepy religious thrift shop, he asked Tucker and I where we were going. And when we told him where we were going, he said, oh, that's too far. Why don't you stay here? Why don't you sleep at the religious thrift shop? That'll be fine. This at a base level, I can understand. He's trying to be friendly and he's trying to be a good Christian. But even for my dad, it sort of crossed the creepy line for him. That crossed the, the creepy line. Yeah. That was kind of odd. Of all the people that I would call if there was an emergency situation, why would I call the, the guy I met randomly in the middle of South Dakota? After he gave us a tour of the Bible walkthrough area, he showed us a portion of the building that I had never seen before. There was one room that was a representation of the ideal Christian marriage. It was a man and a woman. Yada yada, you know the drill. But throughout this whole Bible thrift shop, there are certain spots that you're just like, why is that there? For instance, there was a fat head of Tom Cruise on the wall and he randomly just called him a gringo. This is a, the gringo? After that, he shows us around the rest of the shop. And honestly, I've got to give this guy some credit. He has seriously put a lot of time into making this Bible thrift shop extravaganza a thing. There were even rocks that had little tags on them that alleged that they were from Jerusalem. Other than that, we just sort of perused the shop for a little bit. And I bought this wooden bowl um, that I hold rocks in. So that's kind of cool. So in conclusion, that was probably my last experience at the Bible thrift shop in South Dakota. I actually also saw a Mitchell news article that was talking about how this guy 
is potentially closing up shop and moving on from Mitchell itself. But at the end of the day, this guy is clearly doing something that he loves. And while I make jokes about this whole situation for being creepy, which it was, I don't want you guys to misinterpret my jokes as being outright hate towards this guy. That's never what it is. You can't use just two small interactions to judge the entire character of a person. But holy shit, those two interactions were creepy. There are some horror movie backwoods. I'm gonna turn you into a skin puppet and I can't control that shit, guys, okay? All right, have a good one. See you around.